Well, hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back along to another episode of A Dairyman Starry. My name is Frank, as always. I hope you're doing very well. We are just filling up the water uh, bowser here. We're just going to give the cat a little bit more water in their trough. And um, we've got a few different things we're looking to get started with today. Uh, but it's a beautiful day once again, as you can see. This grass is really coming along. Uh, I reckon we'll have a look into it. Maybe another week or so we might look into getting some first cut silage knocked down here see how we're getting on there but yeah it's really starting to look quite nice uh here it's perfect all right we're in the 6630 and we're just going to get this uh the water trough around the back field we do have a pump there which keeps it to a certain level but every so often i will just stick a little more in uh because it does allow us to get cracking along a bit more uh, the 77 is there, it's on the plow, uh, which means that we have a mixer tractor. Um, and then we are, we picked one up second hand yesterday. Uh, I quite like it actually, it's a surprise, but I'm not opposed to it at all. So, uh, we're going to have a look at that in just a second there, probably as this is unloading. Uh, around we go, sure we're not hitting anything there, oh, wonderful stuff. Sort of up here. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little tractor. I actually picked it for not a lot of money at all, about three and a half, four thousand pounds. Um, so that, that was quite a nice little bargain. Cattle today are looking good. They're enjoying being outside here in what is a lovely day. There's not too much of a breeze either. Um, and it's about 10 a.m. in the morning, so we did the big feed up at the milk earlier on. Uh, and now, yeah, we're just kind of holding fast to see how we, how we get on here. Um, I have got some mud gods that are due to arrive tomorrow for this guy. Uh, but I really like this tractor. This is a beautiful tractor. I'm very, very happy with it now. Um, so, yeah, watch this space to see what else we can get it used to. It's going to be stuck onto a spinner very shortly because we have to get out and about, see what we can uh, what we can get done around the, with the uh, fields, especially with the spring crops that are going to need some attention fairly soon indeed. Uh, so, we'll just give this a bit of a spin around whilst that's empty. Get these... Uh, Gate shut so the cattle don't continue to try and get out everywhere. That's perfect. We caught a few more trailers of muck out of here yesterday as well, but you wouldn't know because it just keeps piling up. Uh, so I'm going to put the little red trailer onto here uh, and we'll get a bit more of that done too. Uh, I really got this timber shifted. This is actually going down to the new build as well for the. Uh, for the house down by the chicken yard there. Just need to get that shifted at some point. There we go. Beautiful. Okie dokie. So we have got the plow on the back of the 77. We're going to be taking that out uh, later on just to start plowing. There's a field just over the, the back side there that we're going to do. It's only about 8 acres, but that's going to be our starting point. Um, and we'll get into that, get that all done and dusted there. We'll be uh, putting that into some spring barley, I imagine. Uh, a little bit left, I've got a little bit of seed left over, so might as well make the most of it. Okay, okay then. But let's go and have a look at our mixer tractor whilst we are here, I reckon. Uh, we'll just disconnect you there. And here it is. Can you tell what it is yet? It's a bit of a shock to the uh, to the norm. It's a completely different colour of paint, but this is a Massey Ferguson 3090. Uh, a shade over 105 horsepower, I think it's about 108, 109. And um, immaculate condition. Really, really is great looking condition. It's got a lot of hours on the clock. About four or five years ago, I had a rebuild on the engine there as well. New rings and pistons and all that good stuff. So. Uh, mechanically it's working very sound, the interior is not the best, but it doesn't need to be. It's going to be on the mixer for uh, its entire duration here really, so that's fine, I don't really mind anything else. Uh, but yeah, 3090, I'm very happy with it. it. It's doing everything I want to do if I fire it up here. It's running through nice and smoothly, nice and quietly, so ultimately, I am, uh, yeah very very pleased with that so we're going to be keeping that around for a while here and it does seem like it's going to be um, a good addition it's a bit of a change uh, i might have to paint it green purely because i uh don't really have any red tractors around here anymore but uh no i am joking of course uh, but no very nice let me know what you think down below um 
Some people even suggested in the last episode that we do bring in some old Masseys. Uh, and yeah, this one I just stumbled across really when I was looking, at following up on a few inquiries with regards to a John Deere. Um, if I wanted a John Deere of similar horsepower, similar range, I'd have been paying about like seven, eight thousand. This, like I say, was three and a half. So, and it'll just run until I don't need it, until it won't anymore, and that's all I need it to do really. So that made perfect sense for me. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think down below. Uh, and it's going to be a great little addition to the fleet now. So this will be its home for the most part. And it's just going to continue to run. As you can see, we carted some muck away, but there's still some more to do. So we'll have to get into that and um, try and get them done later on today. But I want to go and get that plowing done first because it's going to be a bit wet still from all the snow melt that's in there. But today is a good drying day. Oh, it's been off. Um, so I want to give it the opportunity to kind of dry out. We'll roll it over there and then but I want to give it a chance to dry out. So that is exactly what we'll do. But we'll just hook this up to here for now. Nice little, uh, nice little mix that one there. It does really let the fit well. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and get ourselves cracking along. We're nearly halfway through the bale load, the trailer load of bales now, which is good because I want to get that trailer out of here. Uh, and we're starting to get through the hay as well quite quickly, which is, uh, I mean, it's it's what it's there for anyway, so that's not a problem. But there's a lot of muck on the floor from when we last used this plow and cleaned it off, so I have to get that all tidied up. Oh, listen to her. We did fit brand new uh, metalwork to the plow. So it's all raring to go for its next season. Lovely, and we're going to actually head out through the fields along the back here uh, to a field that has been sprayed off, but the weeds are taking the sweet time to die, and uh, we will, we're going to get cracking with it anyway. There's the 68, we'll be putting that onto the drill very shortly actually, uh, we'll go down to that far corner. As you can see though, the grass is coming along very nicely in here too. Uh, look to hopefully, like I say, it only needs a little bit of sunshine for a week or so. We should get a nice little bit of extra growth there. I think this is good to go. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what that's going to look like for us. And, um, yeah, it's got a good first cut off there, hopefully. Okay, and swing into here. Yeah, we'll get our first bit of a start, really. Plow and fold it out. Don't take us too long to get this field all rattled out there, uh, and then once we're done, we'll leave it for a uh, well, if the weather's kind, we'll leave it for a good few days to let it dry the tops out a little bit before we get into working it over, uh, and then drill. It. We might depend on how it dries out there. We might just be able to drill it straight away, but we'll we'll, we'll certainly find out. Uh, I'm hoping so because I want to get, get, give it its best chance as possible. We did spray a little bit of uh, slurry onto here as well, just to help empty out the tanks. So we are incorporating that as we uh, as we go through here, uh, and we'll see how we get on. It'd be a beautiful day to be up in the old uh, hot air balloon there. Nice to actually get the 77 off the feeder though, get it into regular work. Nice to get back into the fields to do regular work. It's been a wet old couple of weeks though, that's for sure. Been a bit of a struggle. Uh, what I'm going to do is just plow out that corner a little bit more. Let's make a little bit neater job over there. And off we go. So how have you been anyway? I hope you're all doing very well. Do let me know. It's been a few days. Well, last week when we last had our uh, uh, last uh, video from us. So I hope you're having a, a great week since then. Let us know what you're driving, what you're working on as always. 
Um, and we will... I always do like to kind of read through the comments that are on the channel left uh, for Simulation for the Nation. We still are without Terry there, but hopefully he's going to be back shortly. Hopefully. We'll just do another couple of passes there, then we'll tidy up this uh, this end as well, make sure that's all looking good. And then that'll be this field all done. So we'll uh, we'll carry on with this. We're going to keep going. Um, hopefully, get this all worked through in the next few hours. It's not a big big field at all, like I mentioned there. So uh, it shouldn't take us too long to ripple through. Uh, the feeder is all full up for uh, the evening feed. And we'll be uh, looking to continue with that uh, and get that one done. Then we'll fill, fill everything up again. But I'm looking forward to give the... The Massey doesn't seem to struggle with the feeder. Uh, especially when it's full there. Firing it over for the first time can be a little challenging. Uh, but yeah, somehow it's, it seems to be coping with it brilliantly. Uh, we're going to plow this in over, I think. So let's just get that done now. And yeah, that'll be uh, very interesting to see how that gets on with this. But uh, like I said, we'll give you an update as we go on with that one. And hopefully we'll get some the 66 back into the workshop over the next few days to get that all taken care of as well. I am going to finish off this plowing now, however. And then I'll come back to you uh, with a little bit of an update later on. And uh, we'll see how we go on, I think. All right, folks, we're just about done there. It's a little bit after uh, lunchtime. And we're just going to swing this back in here. Didn't think it would take too long. It took about three hours to get that small little bit done there. So that was good. Uh, and we'll leave this all hooked up for now. I'm probably going to end up pulling this out of here just so we can get it all, all tied up at some point. Uh, but yeah, we're good there. Uh, right, so we've got the John Deere over there. We need to spring down the pouse again. And we'll get this... Uh, Take another load of muck down there. Now, muck keeps getting a little bit full, I think. So, what we might do actually before we get anything like done is uh, just going to have a look at it. You can see we're starting to work through this pile of bales, which is good news. I'll just drop those off. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go and have a quick look at the muck heap first before we get anything else done. See, uh, we're going to have to push it up a little bit, I think, there. Uh, it's really going to get quite full there, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it all, actually. Uh, that's a, a job to take care of fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, we are just kind of trying to stockpile it all at the moment. And we'll get it when we, when we can get onto the land somewhere. Uh, what I quite often do is get a uh, contractor to come in and look at it uh, and, and haul it away and spread it somewhere for me. Okay, okay. And this is this kind of job here is where this power starts to struggle a little bit because it doesn't quite have enough power to really push up a heap. Uh, it does want to struggle a little bit when you try and do this. Uh, but we'll... Uh, We'll see what we can do. I just need to get this pushed up sufficiently so there's enough room for my uh, for my trailers to get in and out. Pushing up the mucky is always a good old test of a uh, of a tally handler's strength. Looking better. Nice and easy done. Okay. All right. 
fine. Give us a little bit of room there, pushing all up nicely. Uh, got rid of some of that straggling bits, tie this up, and then we can go and just start from the other end of the shed that we started to yesterday. Uh, it seems like all I'm doing at the moment is muck and slurry, which is kind of the, the pattern that you'll get into is a uh, beef dairy farmer in the spring. And uh, once it's uh, everyone's trying to find ways to stockpile and all really, and it's not easy. It certainly isn't easy. So right now we still, well, we only have around about 20 cattle down at the chicken yard. I'm deliber deliberating whether or not they're going to stay there or... We might even... Put myself in here, give myself a little bit more room to move. We might actually bring them out and bring them back up north here. Uh, and give us a little bit more space to work with. I don't think that's the worst idea in the world. Uh, and if we have them all in one place, it's going to make feeding them a little bit e easier right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm two minds out of that at the moment. Just trying to just see what the grass is looking like around here so that when we do look to uh, to bring them out, that, that we've got enough sufficient good quality grass in this area at least. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I expect I might start to move the rest of them very soon in the next, uh, probably the next week, uh, next two days actually. Uh, out there. And that would be if we bring all those guys back up here as well. It's going to be us looking at around about 200 uh, head of cattle uh, back on the farm again. So we are building up there. The aim is to get back up to another two, up to about 250. So over the course of this spring and summer, um, we'll see how that looks. See how possible that's going to be. But other than that, everything else is just kind of ticking over there. Coming along quite nicely. Can't think of any uh, too many issues at the moment. But yeah, it would be nice just to get this going. From a machinery standpoint, I'm happy. I don't want to spend any more money on tractors at the moment. I've spent a lot of money on that uh, kind of topic right now. So we'll be, we'll not be, I don't think at least, uh, apart from maintenance, I don't see any reason to be investing in my Lion and my fleet this summer uh but yeah we'll see uh we'll never know what happens in the future okay how can we go ah it's looking a bit better there's a bit of old stale silage there we'll have to get rid of as well but uh, that's not the end of the world we can do that Perfect stuff. So what we'll do is just continue with this here, I reckon. Uh, and then, but the rest of the day, I'm just going to be uh, tinkering on with the new tractor. There's a few things I want to change and save us over the Keenan as well. Uh, so we'll we'll be doing that, and then that's going to be a stun for today. So we will be back with you probably next week uh, with a little bit more of an update. Until then, though, I hope you have enjoyed. My name's been Frank. I have been your host of Dairyman's Diary. If you have enjoyed this episode and you're yet to do so, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and join us for more uh, on Simulation for the Nation. Uh, until next time, though, have yourself a great day, enjoy what you're doing as always, and we'll see you later.